Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Michael, Kevin, and Bill are here again to speak about Wasteless War. And today, I have a special question. I just wonder whether human humans must serve giants. And this idea came to me after some discussion and thinking and so on. So what do you think, Bill? Do really humans must, not can, but must serve humans, uh, serve giants, sorry? Mm. We cannot hear you. Can you say something, Kevin? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I cannot hear Bill. <clears throat> So if you can take over right now, Kevin, to answer the question first, uh, maybe Bill will uh, block again or something. OK, um, <clears throat> looking at the histor historical perspective, we have always served giants. It's um, we serve the state, we serve the king, we serve the church, we serve our religions. We serve the landowners throughout history. We have always served giants, and I think it's it's not so much must we, but I think these days the question is now we don't have to serve giants. That's interesting, because this is why. Because if you said that we all the time did, this is this habit, you know, and we are trying to break the habits. Uh, yeah. It's the first opportunity we've had in history not to serve giants. That's interesting approach. Uh, can you say something, Bill? We cannot hear you. So uh, let's continue. I think there is a second computer all the time. Uh, so it's interesting because I think there is one more thing because the giants change the shape and size. Before, Usually there was someone on power, someone whom you can see. It was a king, as you mentioned. It was, on the other hand, it was a god as well in some way through the religions and so on. But you can see him or it. I don't know how to call it. Uh, but today there are data which you can't see, you can't touch. There, there is money, of course. It was all the time money. And there are different ones. But your approach is very, very interesting because you are right. <clears throat> and I think that um, there's no difference between a modern corporation and um, a monarchy four or 500 years ago. It's exactly the same thing in the way it's run, the way it has accumulated power and the way it makes everyone subservient to its wishes. Hmm. Very interesting. I don't know. Uh, have you, Bill, been able to listen to the answer of Kevin? Uh, I, I caught parts of it. Uh, I think the main message, if you can repeat the last sentence, because it was the key. Yeah, basically, Bill, I was saying that we've always served giants and that there's very little difference between a monarch from four or five hundred years ago than a modern corporation with sub subdued or <clears throat> um, suppressed and follow their will all the time being told that they're doing us good. Uh, that's, that's interesting. I think there's uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of things in play here. Um, it, it's also, I think, uh, uh, or this is more of a question, isn't this the first time when we have, <clears throat> the, when the institutions uh, have um, we have questioned the institutions? Uh, so, for example, when I was growing up in the fifties and sixties, uh, the government the government was good. Uh, that was before Watergate and before the Vietnam War, uh, and and there were massive protests and so on. Um, and the church was always able to tell you what to do if we just followed the church, if we just followed the government, if we just did as we were told then everything would be okay. So that's one thing. We, we've changed. 
we've taken more power, I think. Uh, and and one of the one of the other things is is that <clears throat> I, I completely lost my train of thought. I apologize. Um, it, it's an interesting question. Can you build on that, Kevin? Uh, well, actually, it's Kevin. If I can, because you did not mention the 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 essence of your answer. Generally, Kevin says that maybe the question is put wrong. Because, and right now you can fill it. Yeah, this is the first time in our history where we have the ability not to serve giants. That's the interesting part. This is, and it is connected to what you says, Bill. So it is really closely connected. So it's the question whether we will be willing to make this step or what will make us to make this step, you know? You, you know, there's there's uh, something else that has happened um, in the in the last 50 or 100 years, and that is the uh, the lifespan, people's lifespan. Uh, so uh, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, uh, you know, people would uh, grow up, uh, start working, have a few kids and then die. Uh, now we're having a, a majority or a large proportion of the population <clears throat> that is actually retiring and has time and then and, and there's things like social security so it has we have time now to say what is important whereas before what was important was putting food on the table and you know shoes on the kids feet <clears throat> so so that has changed also uh, uh we had the same discussion at noontime and there was a very interesting pet again from australia she contributed hugely and there was an indian malaji who live at the moment in in the usa generally and we came to a very interesting uh point uh, about the understanding because the people when we speak about right now about the change many speak about the growth and about the need of change ourselves so many people think that we will live not so good as before pet who is 70 at the moment she lived for five years in a mobile home and she said it was the best time in her life because she has learned to work with less and in fact what she all named she left much richer life than before. So this is, <clears throat> I think that will be one of the explanation to the people, why the people will change. They will not change because of three of us are talking every Wednesday. They will change because it must. they must feel some benefit out of it. And the benefit not to serve the giants or to take the decision whether serve or not will be the personal decision I do not want to live anymore. If I can live better, I will choose the better life. But the connection better will not be connected to more. It will be connected <clears throat> to less, including less dependency, addiction, and so on and so on. So, so that's a theme. <clears throat> that's a theme that uh, we've been developing. Uh, we've we've talked about that a couple of times. How the um, uh, our our society has been for for some time not forever but for some time has been more a more 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 society i want a bigger car i want a bigger house i want more money i want uh, uh, you know a bigger job uh, more 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 and some people are discovering and there is um, there's a lot of talk now about the society being an enough society I have enough food for my tummy. I have uh, uh, enough. I have a roof over my head. I have enough. And get off that roller coaster that is the more, more, more society. Mm. And I think also it's, it's clearer today than ever that serving giants benefits the giants more than it benefits us. They don't... You know, they can give us um, this or that, but the cost of serving them always and always has outweighed any benefits they give us. And I think that it is 
within our grasp not to serve them and not fall for things like Bill says, not fall for the shiny trinkets, not fall for the latest new car. It, you know, there are better ways to go about living than having a new car every three years, which will actually bring you more personal freedom than serving giants. And at the same time, I think the people should understand that if we will get a free phone, it will never be free. Because all what we do is being watched, is being analyzed, we are getting personal ads, we are getting offers which are hard to refuse, and, and, and. Uh, in Japan, they say the things for free are the most expensive ones. This is one, <laughs> one of Japanese proverbs I have learned at the Japanese corporation. And that's probably really, really true. So, uh, and I really like the way how you approach it, because especially the way that we are for the first time, you know, we can be proud on this, that we can choose. And that is so easy to be the role model if we choose the right way at the moment. And it's not about scarcity, you know, I am not Gandhi. I will not hunger for 40 days. But, you know, it's not needed because we have enough. And there was an interesting part of the discussion where uh, a, a member of the audience, which uh, was with me on the stage, says, you know, in India, they are living people which are out of the society. And my question was, how can be they out, out of the society? They are part of the society. Did the society close the eyes, don't see them, or do not want to see them? It does not mean they are out of the society. So there was really very interesting uh, discussion, but no one came to the topic, which Kevin mentioned in the first sentence. You know, I hope that we will talk longer, but you saw the topic in 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 one sentence so <laughs> <laughs> but I, th I think one encouraging thing is if you if you look at what happened in russia when um the russians decided to have a call up and said up to three million young people left they weren't going to serve the giants they had the courage and the the just the strength to reject what has gone on for generations. They said, no, we're not, we're not serving this particular giant. And then they left. And to go to another country to start an entirely new life is not an easy thing to do. But they, they actually did it. And I think that's really, really encouraging. If it happens there, although it is such an extreme situation, it can happen everywhere in lots of different situations. That's a very good point, Kevin. Um uh my my wife uh, comes from the soviet union as we have talked about before and so she still has family back there and and uh immigrating or or leaving everything that you know not only home and friends uh but uh, many of them had um a property there they owned a, an apartment they owned a a car um whatever uh and and we know several of them who have done that. Uh, one gentleman ran, ran a software development company with a couple hundred employees, and he bought them all tickets and their family and, and took uh, three or four planes um, out uh, and uh, to, um, to uh, another country where they started again. Uh, but it's such a strong, you don't, you don't just default into that decision. That is a, a strong decision, and they made it right away. There, there was very little hesitation about that. So, so that that is a, a something to look up for, up to. Uh, as you say, there's hope uh, that in fact people will do this in other situations, and I think that this makes the giants fear. I think the giants look at this and say. Uh, they, they're saying many things. The giants are saying many things to themselves right now. One of the things is in in the, in America we have uh, uh, ten million jobs that are unfilled. We have five million people looking for a job, and that's the first time in a long time that that has happened. And and the giants lose power when they can't hold that threat 
over year where they have to change their uh, management style to be better uh, uh, leaders and, and mentors and not to use this fear and power, which has been ingrained in American business for so long. Uh, generally, uh, you touch right now the managers and so on. They are small giants, we can call them if you are above and all look at you uh, so you can be a giant. And what is interesting that if you look at the politics and if we speak about leaders, we touched this some time ago, there is quite interesting topic because, you know, from my perspective, not a single politician is a leader because leaders don't need to be elected. Leaders are followed. And politicians, they need to be elected because they are not followed. So it's an artificial, artificial creation. And why the politics itself does not work for so long time, for centuries. I don't know who, but someone says, you are right and you are left. How can completely opposite parties agree on one direction? You know, there is a artificial created battle or two magnets which are opposite. So they can do something together, but not without the force a, a, around them to push them in the right position and so on. They can even generate electricity this way, but they are usually above. So they are not in the crowd. Politician is all the time someone who is standing above. So it's it's a form of chance. So I I fully agree with you and with the decision which the people can take. And there is one more thing which was not there in a history. In a history, when there a king was killed, you know it in the, in the next country, you know it in one week time. Today, you will know it in one second time because everything is connected. So if the connection is used the right way, <laughs> which is all the time not in favor of the giants, then the speed of change and the transformation of the mindset is very fast. The war, it's a, of course, it's a critical point, but even other things we can deliver very fast. And this is important to use it the right way. And I think it's interesting with the, the accessibility of um, information. I mean, clearly having information enabled these Russians to make their mind up very quickly and say no way and then have the courage to leave. But I, I think it's also, this will affect other giants, you know, because then not only like Bill says, we not only will we not work for these corporations, but we won't buy their products and we won't help them in any way. We, we actually, it, it will work the other way around. We'll say, listen, we're not just boycotting you. We actively dislike you, and we want you to close right. your business down. Right. So the answer is clear. We must not serve giants. We can I use mean, the we can use the power of the giant <laughs> because of the right. size of the giant. But again, same as with the fire. He can become part, but must be part of a society, a tool, not the master. So they must change the roles. If they would like to survive, they must change the role and the way how they behave. So there's the one other element that, uh, that we haven't uh, mentioned here, and that is some people like to serve giants. Some people like to be slaves because they don't have to make any decisions. They like power, they are drawn to power, uh, and, and they, uh, turn off, uh, they turn off their own decision-making and, and accept, uh, accept the, the giant's power because that's easier. It's easier than thinking about it. So I don't know if that is 10% uh, of people or 90% of, it's not 90%, but, and I, I suspect that we all have some uh, uh, sense of fatigue in having to make so many decisions and having to 
be so independent. So I think we all have a small part in us that would like us just to stop fighting. Is that, is that, that's a question. Do, 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 do you feel that most people, everybody has, everybody has this small piece in them that wants to accept uh, the, the, the rule of the giants because that would make their life easier? I think you're describing politicians. I think that you'll find 100% of these people in each parliament around the world. Uh, from my perspective, I think you are right, but not in a connection to giant. The connection of someone will be thinking for me, taking the decision for me. Okay. So it can be, you know, we are three men, so we get married. So why we get married except of love? Because someone will take care of us and, you know, do things better than we do. No, it's a it's an extreme example, but you know, part of us, I think, it's like it's like you know, we like our our parents because they take care of us. You know? And even if we can do it by ourselves, we let them to do the work before we understand that we should take part in it. So I think it is part of us. And it's right, in my opinion, it's right. But what is not right when it turns into addiction. And this is exactly what the giants used against us. You know, the comfort of delivering everything at the, at the distance of our thumb at the moment. It's no more. And they are right now, they are in, uh, or has been already introduced smart contact lenses where you just blink and the information will show up, you know. So it's very comfortable, but it's horrible. And you know, last week or this week has approved the US, uh, I don't know who is approving this stuff, the neuralink by to implant, to, to implement the chip in a brain of a human. It's it's for the first time in a in a history. That that uh, I think is inevitable. Uh, that 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 one's been coming, but they've done they've done that with monkeys for, for decades. Um that that one's inevitable. Uh we we need we need a lot of discussion on that one though. That's uh, that's got some big big ramifications. I, I just wanted to, and I'm not taking issue with you, Michael, um, but I did not get married to have someone take care of me. Um, the, the reasons are complex, but that was not one of them. Maybe it's the reasons are different from, from ev for everybody. There's a wide range of reasons. And in fact, if we can answer that question, then that also relates back to why we work for giants and comply with what giants are telling us. And this is what we discussed last time. As you said, there is time in our life when we do not care just for us. And we serve because we need to take care of the others as well. And it's part of our decision. Because it's generally, it's easier it's hard, but it's easier for us than to find a new business, establish a new business. So you just, just jump in one, which is running, and you follow, and you deliver some results to get paid. And, and also, let's use the word fear in there also, because you, 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 you take the comfort of the safety of the giant because you fear being out there on your own. Mm -hmm. All right. I was just thinking from what you two guys were saying that from that, there is only one giant that we need to serve and that giant we're not serving at all well. And that's our planet. All right. Because we are not listening. You know, the planet is silent. It does not pay any advertisement. It does not offer us any special service because we are big or small or rich or poor. It just work. I like, uh, Bill, you, you just posted uh, before this told the TEDx, TEDx uh, speech on the poverty. I know it for uh, from from for longer time, generally. I am even, I think, contacted with the, with the guy. It was quite interesting to talk about this. So, and 
You are right, Kevin. The question is, who will give? Because I don't think that Greenpeace green are the mouth of the planet. You know, and I don't think any climate activist is a, is a mouth of the planet and so on. I don't think so. I think the planet can speak and is speaking to us. The only thing which why we do not listen is because we are running. We are following the instruction around through your life because you will have more. Still, this more is so strong, behold, that we are not able to stop until we are older and we do realize there is something wrong and we can do differently. But uh, the aim is not to wait another until everyone, everyone will be old. Because we must teach the young ones to listen and the old ones to listen as well. And then together, that will be this 8 billion people, which there will be no space for the giants. And I think also that the, the next generation, they will grow up never having known that there was a polar ice cap in the north of the planet. We're the last generation who saw that there was a permanent ice cap on the North Pole. And yeah, no amount of uh, propaganda or uh, scientific uh, dirtying the waters or the selling of carbon hides the fact that the ice cap is melted. And you know, we just need to use our own eyes sometimes. It's not that complicated. If the polar ice cap is gone, it's not only a reason for that, but then there's a way to prevent that happening or making it worse. And it's up to us to do that because we've experienced how it was and now we've experienced the change. Therefore, we can re-engineer change. The next generations can't do that. You know, what I'm expecting, who will be the first of the giant which will say, ice cap melted, great, let's make condos there. Let's make it as a new paradise. Yeah, and let's mine the waters now that the ice is not there. Let's fish the last fish stocks that are there. And, 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 then, yeah. and, 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 then, and then there will be posts about uh, the fake news. There never were any ice caps. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a brave new world. Unfortunately, and with the fake news and with the AI and GPT, I really, really I notice at the moment a huge increase of articles which are, you don't feel any anything with these articles. So I think 99% are being already distributed and written by some support of AI, let's call it. And it is difficult because in the volume of the content which is being produced and delivered, it's for the people who cannot read between the lines or do not feel the emotions, you know. Right. They do not realize that. They just follow and they just spread it and it's spreading globally very fast in a, in a minute's time. This is why it's so important to have, a, to have this moment, have this 10 minutes speaking to the people of the world. You know, I told to Bill, I don't know whether you noticed, Today, the United Nations, uh, what is the environmental program, UNEP, published for the first time in a history, which I, as at least in the last 10 years, because I am, I am watching it carefully. They published a tweet that plastic waste can be prevented. <laughs> you know, 10 years, I am telling them that it can be. And it took 10 years to post, first post with mention, you can prevent plastic waste to happen. It's crazy. Crazy. This is the behavior of the giant. You know, the giant, before it moves its hand, 10 years are away. So this is why we cannot, we must stop serving the giants because we move much more faster than the giants do. And the same is show us to the, uh, by the Zoom, which announced right now 10 minutes only left. So uh, it's horrible how fast it goes. So it's quite interesting. And I think the most important part, and if I can, uh, 
Kevin, I will use your question. I will start a poll about it. It's quite interesting. Uh, if you allow me, so I will I will do it. Yes, of, of course, yes. Excellent. It'd be actually really interesting to see the results. Me too. So ten more, eight more minutes or nine, I can't see nine more minutes to go. So there's a lot of time to talk. So there's, uh, I'm I'm reminded, I'm reminded of um, of a, a conversation that I had back in the, oh, it was probably the mid '80s uh, with um, uh, with a guy from work, uh, and he took a very holistic uh, approach to things, and and for some reason we were talking about uh, env the environment, uh, even though that was not such a hot topic back then. Uh, but uh, he said, he said, I'm not that preoccupied. Uh, we are not going to destroy the earth. We are not going to destroy the earth. At some point, the earth is going to say, why are these people trying to hurt me? And the earth will shrug and humans will be gone. And the earth will continue to live. So. <laughs> so he's his, his point his point was that we cannot destroy the earth the earth is so much more than anything that man can destroy um i i'm I, i'm not so sure that i fully agree with that but that's a very interesting uh point that leads him to say i don't need to do anything someday we will just all die and the earth will continue uh it's interesting because uh, we came to a similar topic a few few hours ago. Just uh, I pointed out that the Earth or the planet is giving us signals, you know, about the change. And the last one was COVID. No matter whether it was artificial or not, the result was it show up the blue sky. The water has been clean. You know, so much the people realize that they must not travel every day one hour by car to do the work, which can be done from home. And so many, even our distance communication using tools, which has been developed 20 years ago, but nobody use it for work, we finally realized. So I think that it was one of the indicators which exactly your friend in the old days mentioned right. I don't want it to, the humans to extinct, but I think we should really listen to the planet. As you said, this is the giant, and this is the only one which we should listen. Absolutely correct. Unfortunately, uh, wrong groups of people choose to be the speakers, you know, including, uh, I'm sorry, including Greenpeace, United Nations, and all the others. They choose to speak for the planet. They don't do that. They do it for own business and profitability. So, you know, if you just analyze, the, which I did a few years ago, the Greenpeace budgets, it's growing, United Nations the same, and the results are not there. You know, if there will be the results, I will have nothing against. But there are no results. And the next year, they are asking more money, and the next year, even more, and still there are no results. So... Why should why should we listen to them? It's just the image. It's just the pretenders who try to pretend to be the speakers of the giant called Earth, but they are not at all. So, uh, but great example, Bill. Great example. But I agree with what you say about these organizations. They achieve nothing except spending money and flying around the world and uh, living a high life, but. There are no results. Things are getting worse. Nothing is improving. And how they can be, be proud of that is, is beyond me. It really is. Uh, we, I... sa we said last time uh, or uh, previously um, that the key to changing, what is the key to changing is education. And what is uh, one of the keys of education is critical thinking and teaching children how to look at fake news and recognize it and how to look at greenwashing and recognize that and getting into conversations 
uh, where they're they're discussing the right issues and and i know right is correct for some people not correct for but uh teaching our children how to think and not how to be robots that, that's one of the one of the most important parts but at the same time the parents must change themselves you know because if the children uh, you tell them don't use the mobile phone and you use it yourself all day then of course it's a, it's a, a bad role model and this is why we right. have to combine these two the older ones must understand this uh, this message and i think they will even easier than the kids and the kids will get the right delivery of the information the issue at the moment is that uh, those people who speak about greenwashing they are usually the greenwashers themselves including right. the european commission so green deal already the name of green deal is a greenwashing because it's about the deal. What is interesting, I found out, I don't know whether I mentioned it one day, I found out if there are two, two words, sentences like green deal or carbon credits and similar. Usually the first word is the marketing. The second right. one is the reality. So green is it's everything fine, but it's deal, it's trade, it's money. So it is about this. And usually these two words, I I studied or I checked five or six of those and all the time the same. That was so interesting. I never I never considered that. But it was quite interesting. Hmm. I've never heard that. Uh, thank you for sharing that one. I must admit, I think that um, whoever came up with this idea of carbon credits, what, the first time I read about it, it's, just, it's simply... It's nonsense that this can't be right. This, I must be missing something. And unfortunately, I wasn't. And I, I don't want to pick on any one person, but I hear the, the, the person who ran it has now quit and retired. And um, yeah, I hope he enjoys his pension and is proud of himself because uh, he shouldn't be. It's, a, it's the, really the biggest crime against the planet and humanity. Because it was sold as an environmental, but it was only economical tool. And finally, you know, I was thinking at the end of last year when first, let's say, financial institution connected somehow to United Nations says we will not accept the credits anymore or we will not give credits for credits, let's say. Uh, today announced uh, Google uh, division, Google Venture, that they will found five million US dollars to carbon credit startup. Unbelievable. Yeah. So the giants are really not only blind, they are stupid as well. Yeah, I was just going to ask a question. I don't believe that they are blind and stupid. I believe they knew just what they were doing at the beginning. I believe that they were sitting around the big table while one of them uh, described uh, this new concept of uh, carbon credits, and and then and, and the others sat around listening and said, "I can sell that. I can sell that. That's <laughs> a good idea." And uh, one at we have only one minute, so one additional information because it's giant. They said that they sit around the table ten years ago, and today they said, "Wow, great idea!" Because the length of the connection is ten years, so. Thank you for next interesting discussion. I would like to wish everyone have a nice time free of waste and wasting in all its forms. Stay safe, free, and be visible because giants fear visibility of human most. And we will meet again at the same address. So see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.